Our understanding of the human timeline isn't perfect, but we have a pretty good understanding on how human civilization reached this point. But then, sometimes, we find artifacts that we can't explain and could possibly disrupt our entire understanding of humans' time on Earth or our place in the universe. In this video, we'll examine three of those artifacts. This is three bizarre, unexplained artifacts. Before today's video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest videos. If you want to see a case or topic covered by Paranormally Listed, then go to criminallylisted.com and fill out the questionnaire under the Suggested Case tab. Number 3. The Saqqara Bird Egypt, November 1898 after a grueling, day-long journey heading south from Cairo, British Egyptologist Norman Degarius Davies and his team of excavators arrived at the Pyramids of Saqqara, ready to reveal its mysteries. As the archaeologists went to work on the tomb of Padi Amin, Davies meticulously copied the hieroglyphics adorning the tomb's walls. Workers began collecting artifacts, placing them in boxes for shipping back to Cairo where they would be further studied and catalogued. Upon arrival of the crates, the Cairo Museum noted the items were from roughly 200 years BC. Among the finds was what they called wooden bird model. It is about 6 inches long, 39 grams, made of sycamore wood, and had a head carved to resemble a falcon. Nothing special, they thought. After all, the Egyptians had been known to make models of birds before. Finding nothing else of note in the collection, the curators packed up the boxes and stacked them in a dusty corner of the museum's basement, where they sat for the next 70 years until 1969 when Dr. Khalil Masia opened them and was astounded by what he found, because the mall bird in one of those boxes looked remarkably like a modern airplane. In 1889, of course, airplanes had yet to be invented, so it's understandable the museum workers of the time didn't see the resemblance. But the Sakara bird, as it's become known, had all the hallmarks of an aircraft, and all the hallmarks of a simple toy model. For one, other model birds unearthed by archaeologists generally had the faded remains of painted feathers, and were often depicted as having legs or feet. This model showed neither of those characteristics. For another, other bird figurines had an anatomically correct tail, that is, one that lays flat, horizontal to the wingspan. It was the tail that was really the most interesting thing, Messia told the Beacon Journal London Times in 1972, because it distinguishes the model from all others that have been discovered. The tail on the Sakara bird is vertical, like the rudders of an airplane and there is a notch in the vertical tail where a tailplane would perhaps slot in. Not unlike a toy glider you can buy today, and certainly not like any birds in existence. Then their wings are slightly curved downwards in what is called reverse dihydral or anhydral formation. Not unlike the drooping wings on modern day cargo planes. So the question becomes, did the ancient Egyptians have a theory of flight? Messiah thought so. A scholar of Egyptian models, he noted that the Egyptians often built models of things they planned to eventually build in full scale. This included funeral boats, warships, and chariots. He believed that someone back then was devising a proof of concept model and tested out his theory. Soon, Messiah and his brother, an aeronautical engineer, set about recreating the model in balsa wood and were amazed when the thing actually stayed aloft when it was thrown. In 2006, aerodynamics expert Simon Sanderson reconstructed the model in a larger version and confirmed it could get and stay airborne. Of course, with any scientific discovery, there are factions on either side of the debate. Detractors of the bird as an airplane theory point out that in its falcon form, it's likely simply an idol to the god Horus. Others say it's merely a decoration 
use the top of a weather vane or the bow of a ship. But some of those who believe the model is a glider prototype really believe it, going as far to postulate that whoever built the model did so after seeing some kind of airplane in the sky back then. Unable to comprehend what they were seeing, they devised the model with the head of a bird, because to the ancient Egyptians, birds were the only thing in the sky. Either way, perhaps it's time to rearrange credit for flight with the Wright brothers, receiving the assist from an Egyptian inventor 2,000 years ago. Number 2. Excetrin Flints In the early 2000s, archaeologists sifting through mine ruins in Mexico made an interesting discovery. In a burial site, they found a number of what they called eccentric flints. Eccentric because their forms vary wildly throughout dozens of examples, and flints because the carved material of pieces resemble flints, even though the items have been found to be carved El Calcedian and Obsidian. These beautiful and ornate pieces have been the subject of some debate over the years. The first mystery is how they were carved. Given their intricate and ornate designs, it seems the Mayans may have used precision tools, rather the deer antler tools generally associated with this kind of work for that time. The second is their purpose. Some of these eccentric flints are razor sharp giving rise to the theory that they may have been used in ceremonial bloodletting rituals, or as weapon heads for axes and spears wielded by chieftains. And the third mystery is their inspiration. Though many eccentric flints depict animal heads, others seem purely abstract and artistic. But many great flints also seem to depict one image in many variations, that of the Mayan god Kewil. In ancient Mayan history, Kewil, otherwise known as God K, has been most associated with lightning. In many of the depictions of Kewil, he is shown having huge eyes with spirals for pupils. He is also shown as often having snakes for legs and other strange attributes. But among these strange images is the depiction of a smoking axe stemming from God K's forehead. Some have speculated that this may be a weapon of some kind, and some have gone further to say that the weapon is a smoking gun wielded by an ancient alien visitor. Ancient minds seeing a visitor would be in awe of its ability to control electricity, which, of course, they would associate with lightning. Sure, the idea of K. Will as some ancient alien may be far-fetched, but God K's connection to outer space isn't. Astronomy was a huge part of Mayan civilization. In the ancient Mayans documented their belief in the connection of K-Will to Saturn and Jupiter when seen in retrograde in the night sky. And then there is Mars. On July 25, 1976, NASA released images of a Mars area called Cydonia taken by its Viking 1 space probe. One of the images caused a sensation revealing what the tabloids called the face on Mars. Thirty years later, NASA released subsequently higher resolution photos of the area, which all but disproved the face on Mars phenomenon. And yet, while the face on Mars was debunked, NASA's new images of the Cydona area also seemed to capture more faces on the Martian surface, and one that seemingly depicted Cod K. So the question becomes, were the mines eccentric flints created to honor an unseen god, or were they life portraits of an extraterrestrial being from the cosmos? Number 1. The Koso Artifact Before getting into the last story, we need to define a few terms. The first is a geode. These are sometimes round, usually hollow stones, Formed from sedimentary and volcanic rock. Cracking open a geode often reveals a beautiful crystalline formation inside. They are usually anywhere from half a million to a few million years old. 
And for any rock collector, they're usually the prizes of their collection. The second term we need to define is spark plug. The spark plug, or sparking plug, was invented around 1860 by Etienne Lenoir for use in his new gas engine. The plug's purpose is to provide electrical spark that would ignite any combustible material, like gas, within the engine. It's basically what makes engines turn on. So with those terms understood, it's hard to explain how a 19th century modern invention would end up sealed inside a rock that was half a million years old. But that's exactly the discovery made by three gem shop owners on February 13th, 1961 in California. After hanging up the clothes sign on the shop store one Monday morning, Wally Lane, Mike Mikesell, and Virginia Maxley grabbed the rock hammers and ventured into the coastal mountains about eight miles away. They were looking for some gems to perhaps put out for sale in their shop. Later that day, on a 4,300 foot peak near Death Valley, the rock hounds picked up a large stone they believed would have one of those beautiful crystals inside. Unable to break it open during their trip, they brought it back to the gem shop where Mike set about trying to cut into the stone and ruined his diamond tip saw blade in the process. For hours, the three tried to get the stone apart, but when they finally did, they were astounded not to find crystals, but some kind of device. Unsure of what they found, but knowing it was unusual to say the least, the three put the unopened rock on display in their shop, but it wasn't for sale. When word began to spread in the rock collecting community, they were contacted by someone who wanted to examine the artifact a little bit closer. A journal called Info, calling itself the Chronicle of Science and the Unknown, got in touch with the owners who let writer Ron Willis examine the geode. He reported that it had a metal core about 2 millimeters in diameter. The core had been split into two in the act of cutting open the geode. But it was clear to the naked eye that the core had a collar that seemed to be crafted of porcelain. And this collar was encased in a hexagonal sheath that was made of wood but seemed to have become petrified over the years. Further, the journal found that the object also had protruding from it a kind of nail and a washer. Then Willis performed x-rays on the device, finding the metal cylinder went down through the length of the object. Ron and his brother, Paul, soon determined that the object closely resembled a modern-day spark plug. I was thunderstruck, Ron Willis wrote in the journal, because suddenly all the parts seemed to fit together. But how was this possible? The first thought was that it was a hoax created by the gem shop owners to perhaps increase business. But then, why would they donate the find to the Eastern California Museum shortly after its discovery? The second is that it was a hoax perpetrated by someone else. But then, why would someone hide their little project on the mountain peak in the middle of nowhere, just hoping someone would eventually find it? The third explanation is that it was some kind of weird, naturally occurring formation. The thought being that somehow, the circa 1920s era spark plug ended up getting covered in rock through some natural process. And the stone encasing the spark plug was not 500,000 years old, but rather a few dozen. Its formation somehow accelerated by the right environmental conditions. But how did a spark plug end up 4,300 feet up in an area that had no drivable roads in order to get covered by a rock in the first place? And finally, the last explanation is the one that caused the coastal artifact to appear on this list. Because some believe the spark plug is an artifact left over by a civilization which rose and died long before modern humans roamed the earth. By becoming encased in stone, the artifact was protected by the elements and now remains the only evidence of these ancient humans, who lived millenniums before the earliest known evidence of modern humans we have found. Then there are those who believe 
that whatever powerful force is that control our modern world, the New World Order, the Illuminati, take your pick, have suppressed this knowledge for fear of it changing our view of ourselves and our history. Because the Koso artifact eventually vanished and its whereabouts today are unknown. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you found it interesting. If you did find it interesting, please make sure you subscribe. We'll have a new video about the paranormal every week. If you just discovered this channel, please make sure you check out our other channel, Criminally Listed. We have over 325 videos featuring bizarre but true crime stories. You can find it at youtube.com slash criminally listed. We also have a podcast about cold cases that were eventually solved called Criminally Listed Presents Into the Killing. You can find it on Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, and anywhere you find great podcasts. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.